producers, we're not adding, asking to add too much more to that. I think the, a lot of the framework's already there, it's just a matter of a political will to change. Mm -hmm. So, is there a light at the end of that tunnel? Uh, <laughs> well, I think I'd like to hear your perspective, Yos, because obviously in your case, common sense didn't prevail. I mean, you had a, you know, had a successful business doing really great work, and, and here you are having this ridiculous fight over a composter, and you know, eventually you're forced to close your business. You know, I'm interested to hear what do you think is the consumers, what role can the consumers play to help, you know, push the regulators down a certain path? Is it, is it I think in 50 years' time, my grandkids will say, did you guys really drink pasteurised milk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the science in Europe, that, and there are so many studies now, and I think that that, as I've said to Tyrone and other friends that are dairy farmers that were selling raw milk, I know that it is incredibly tough right now, but I think that this is the time that we will get some clear and honest and, and, and some clarity around this legislation. Selling it as bath milk was ridiculous in the first place. Mm. And so I think that right now is a very, really crucial time and the government is aware of the mounting evidence that you know doctors are using it in hospitals in Germany. The Swiss are now study after study is coming out that they're realising that they need to start, you know, the, the fact that in, in America researchers are requesting funding to find out what it is in raw milk that stops allergies and then so they can add it to pasteurised milk. And so, <laughs> this and, you know, social media is, is to, it has a lot to do with this now, you know, we're becoming more and more aware. And last week I was, I, I was lucky enough to cook a meal for the boss of Google Food, and this, he just said, how can we help as a company get this debate out there? I mean, some of the world's biggest thinkers and we're very powerful people are looking at this because even in America, there are hundreds of thousands of people that are drinking raw milk every day, legally, and state by state, it is slowly changing there, and we are the minority now, not the majority. And, you know, there's still five and a half billion people drinking raw milk every day today, Mm -hmm. So I think that common sense will prevail on this, and with the compost, the same thing. You know, I can. The, the city of Sydney is doing is doing everything they can to avoid happen what happened in Melbourne mm -hmm. because it is quite embarrassing that something like this has happened. But it's just, you know, it seems like it went on forever and it did for me for three years. But really, you know, over a hundred years, it's not. It, it, change happens quite quickly. I am really confident that I think that and. And like, I'm really worried that, that, that there is a huge demand for raw milk. There's no doubt about it. The concern is that people that farm conventionally and don't go to all the trouble that dairy farmers that should do, and in Europe especially when you've got people like, I know how in Europe, like the biggest buyer of soybeans in, in the world is Denmark for their dairy cows. Mm -hmm. And then there's all sorts of additives already added in, so they don't have to worry about adding them to stop the animals from getting sick. With, Australia is lucky that we've got an industry that predominantly has really healthy cows on pasture. It's now, let's not put so much pressure on these dairy farmers to try and, you know, make enough money. Let's just allow them to have a little bit more money so they're not putting, trying to put too many animals on their pasture. And, you know, it's common sense, really. Mm -hmm.